Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 57. Now in this episode, it's kind of like a follow on from an earlier video, episode number 50, where Aaron Blaze showed us how as a traditional artist, he recreates the look of hair and fur in his pictures. Now I mentioned at the time that it's amazing how much of a, a sort of like a crossover there are with techniques between researchers and artists. And this video shows a perfect example of that because we're gonna use the exact same technique to help us cut out a lion from a background that's not plain and simple like you usually get when you're seeing videos showing you how to do cutouts. The background in this example is really quite similar to the tone and the color of the lion's mane. So this technique works brilliantly to kind of help us fake the perfect selection. All right, so this is our start image, and you'll notice over in the uh, layers panel here, it's actually a smart object at the moment. If I just double click on that, this basically shows you the original out of camera shot, which was this one here. It's of a line that I took when I was at Woburn Safari Park in the UK, and you can see all these fence lines going across here. Now, if you haven't seen it already, make sure you check out my YouTube channel where you can see a tutorial showing exactly how we can remove these fence lines. But today, in this particular tutorial, what I want to show you is how we can do a cutout. Now this is, you know, this is clearly going to be one of those cutouts that's not going to be quite so straightforward, but I want to show you how we can cut it off this uh, quite um, awkward background because the tones and the colours are all quite similar to the lion's mane, but we're going to show you how we could actually cut it out and I ended up making this particular uh, composite image here. So here's how we're going to do it. First of all, we're going to go to the quick selection tool. Now I've tried lots and lots of different ways to do this as best as I could, but I did find that this this particular way worked best for me. You might find another way, but certainly this way seemed to work the best for me. Now I'm going to go to the quick selection tool then, so press W on the keyboard, and the first thing I'm going to do is just make a very, very rough kind of selection going around the line, inside the line's kind of fur area here. Now as I'm doing this, one thing I want to make sure, once I've done the initial kind of outline there, is I'm going to zoom in and anywhere where I can see the background coming through the hair, I don't want to include that at this stage. So I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key to get the minus and click to drag it away from there. So I don't want to see any of the background coming through on my initial selection. So I'll hold down my option, just take it off there as well. I can actually add a little bit more in there, so I'll just click and drag up there, hold my space bar down, and let's have a look if we can include anywhere else. Maybe take that up just to the edges. I'm not worried about the grass down here because this is going to be composited uh, into the scene later on anyway. It's the main that I'm mainly um, concerned about. Let's just take that little bit off there as well. So that'll probably do us for now. So the next thing I'm going to do is just go to refine edge of the top to try now to get Photoshop to bring out some more of the hairs, the ones that I didn't miss. But the thing to remember here is you're never gonna get all those fine hairs out. If the line had been photographed on a white background, no problem whatsoever. But there are times when we're doing cutouts and selections that we need to kind of fake it to make it look as realistic as possible. And this is gonna be one of those cases. But for now, first of all, let's just see if we can get a few more of those hairs out. So I'll click on Smart Radius, see if that does anything. I personally didn't see it do anything in there, but I'll leave it on anyway, and we're going to drag up the Radius slider. Now, unlike other techniques I've shown you when I'm doing cutouts, this one I am going to take quite some way. And we're going to start to see that kind of almost like milky smudged kind of effect going around our line. And that's the reason I'm doing that is because it, it is kind of picking up on the hairs, even though it's not doing a brilliant job. It's kind of showing me where they are. So I'll take that up to around about maybe 50 pixels, something like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just grab the edge detection here, this refined radius tool, and just going to increase the size of it and drag around my line now to see if it can pick up any more hairs from the uh, going around the outside edges here. Something like that. Let's just see what that does. Okay, that's fine. You can see now we're still getting a lot of this smudginess around. Obviously, we don't want to include that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the adjust edge section and I'm going to boost up the contrast. Now, although that's going to kind of get rid of that smudging, it's all going to make also going to make sure the or make even the hairs that we've picked up very, very hard edge, contrasty, and really obvious. But I'm not concerned about that because we're going to refine it a bit later on. But that's probably as far as I'll take it at this stage. 
page. So the last thing I'm going to do before going now out of Refine Edge back into Photoshop is in the output section. And this time I'm going to change the output to, to layer mask so I can work completely non-destructively and then we'll click OK. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is add a layer below this now. So I'll hold down my command key, click on the new layer icon, so it puts that layer below. Then I'm going to fill that, so go to edit, fill, and I'll just choose white from the drop down menu and click OK. So now I can see a lot clearer what I'm doing as opposed to working with a transparent background. All right, so I now need to have a kind of like a reference point so I know where I need to add in and how to add in the, uh, the, the fur that we couldn't quite pick up in Refine Edge. So I'm going to do that by having the original image as a reference. So I want to go to image and duplicate. So I've got two copies. Let's just type in the word copy. So now I've got two copies of the image I've been working on and I'm just going to click on my original one over on the left hand side, the left hand tab and go window, arrange, two up, vertical. So now on the left hand side I've got my original cutout, on the right hand side I've got my reference picture and the reason I've got that is so now I can actually hold down my shift key and click on the layer mask and I'm going to see the original background. So that kind of now shows me where I need to add in the fur and so I don't add in too much of that back wall as I start to paint in the hair. So I kind of hope that makes sense. All right, so let's just reposition these now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over to my left hand image and I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked onto the layer mask because now I'm going to use the smudge tool and this kind of goes back to what Aaron did in that guest video that he did for us a few weeks back now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose when I've got the smudge tool, one of the brushes that I've made to look like hair and you can see them all down here. I've got a number of ones that I've actually created using that exact same, um, same technique that Aaron showed in the video. So again, if you haven't seen it, definitely make sure you go and check that out because it will make a lot more sense when we're doing this. So I'm just going to click on one of these now and I'm going to come to the smudge tool and all I'm going to do is at the top here we've got strength. So I'll take that down to around about maybe 75 and this is purely experimentation. And all I'm going to do is increase the size of the brush and start smudging the hair where I can see that it's all very rough and we've got hair missing, I'm going to create hair by smudging what we've already got. So you can see now as we zoom in, we're going to zoom in here, you can see we're starting to create hair. It's fake hair because we're just smudging what's already there. But this is faking the look of a real cutout. And this is the kind of stuff that we have to do, you know, on, on images where the background wasn't so straightforward. We have to kind of like paint in hair or smudge in hair. And it does actually do a really good job of, as Joel Grimes would say, selling the fake. So I'm just going to go and really rush around kind of doing this so that you can see the effect. In fact, let me just zoom in and I'll kind of alt or option click on the layer mask so you can see exactly what it's doing. You can see now we've got this smudging and that smudging is bringing out some of the colour in the mane, stretching it out and giving the impression there's actually hair there when we couldn't actually really pick it up when we did the original cutout. So I'm going to just continue to go round as I'm smudging down I'm still looking over to the image on the right hand side to see where that hair needs to be because I don't want to smudge too much into the background and start to bring that into the image. So I'm kind of going down here, paint down the left hand side of the mane and as I'm doing this I'm going to vary the size of the brush head or the smudge head should I say. You can see increasing it and decreasing it and I'll also play around with the strength here because we don't want to everything to be smudged at the same strength. We want it to be kind of random like it would be for real hair so we'll kind of as I'm changing the size I'll also change the strength and that kind of helps with adding the kind of like realism to it, into it. So I'm just going to carry on kind of painting around here. This is doing a very, very quick job purely to show you how we can fake a cutout when we've got a really tricky background. But you can see as I've done this, the idea when we originally went into Refine Edge and kind of picked up more hair than we normally would want to, and we had that smudgy kind of look in the Refine Edge, that's helped us out because it's picked up hairs, although not brilliantly, but it's kind of showed us roughly where they should be. So now we can just continue to come in now and start to smudge in to kind of of make them look even more realistic. So I'm just going to carry on painting round, vary the strength. I might even choose another one of the brush heads here that we've chosen down, that I've made down here. Let's just try something different, take the strength down and we'll just start to smudge out with that one as well, just to vary the look of how this goes. So I'm just going to jump forward, I'll do a, a few more minutes off screen and then I'll show you the kind of look that we've got.
All right, so I've done maybe one or two minutes more now just to add in a few more hairs. But if we now compare the left hand image, the one we've been working on, to the original image on the right hand side, we can see the difference that I've made. At the moment on the right hand side, we can see where the hairs originally were. But this is how it looked. If I just turn the lay mask on now, you can see how the image was when we first of all brought it out of the refine edge. You know, the hair was very, very contrasty. We're missing loads. But now compare that to the left, we do have have a lot more hair. We've kind of faked it by smudging or painting some in using that technique that Aaron showed us in that video. So now let's just go back to having one image on screen, the one they've been working on. So let's go window, uh, arrange and consolidate all to tabs because I only want to show you now the image as far as we've come. This is our cutout with the smudged hair and it's looking pretty good. You know, we can certainly fake it now to make it look as if that hair was originally there and we did a great cutout. However, before we add this into our picture there's one thing that we need to do because no matter how careful we are when we're trying to paint in this hair using this technique I certainly couldn't help bringing in some of the background and what I mean by that is if we look down the uh, left hand side of the image here we can see that we've got his mane but it's got this uh, kind of like a dark outline going around in this certain part and if I come to the layer mask now we can see that in the original image it doesn't have that what I've actually done is smudge some of the background into it and that's given it this kind of outline but we can get rid of that it's not a disaster we can certainly get rid of that by using a layer style so how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to double click now to the right hand side of the layer name within the layers panel and then I'm going to go to Inner Glow. Now make sure, even though when you tick on the Inner Glow, that you actually do have it highlighted. So click and you can see that the blue bar is highlighted so that you do have the Inner Glow Layer Style Dialog uh, properties there that you can affect. So the Blend Mode will leave a screen for the time being, but what I'm going to do is just click on this little colour swatch. Then I'm going to bring my cursor into the image and where we've got the main, I'm going to go round to the, right to the edge just before we get to that darkening click once and sample and that then puts that color if I just click OK the color of that main where I've just clicked now is added into this kind of color swatch here so now what I can do is bring up the size and it's going to kind of cover over that darkening by adding a glow in the color of the main. So it's kind of doing a bit of magic there just by hiding it from view. So if I turn it on and off, you can see the difference that's making. Now that's all well and good. It's certainly working great on the left hand side, but the effect has been applied to the whole picture. And we don't necessarily want it there because certain parts are of the main were dark, like at the top and round to the right hand side. You can see now that it's actually affecting that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click OK. I'm just going to drag this over so it's a little bit closer to where I am because I'm kind of left handed working on a Cintiq. So it saves me having to reach across the picture. So here we've got the, the layers panel and we can see now underneath the layer containing the line, it says effects and inner glow. That is our layer style, but it's affecting the whole image. If I pop my cursor now over the words inner glow and right click, a pop-up menu comes and at the bottom we have create layer. And when I click on that, what it does, it takes that layer style and puts it onto its own layer. And now because it's on its own layer, I can add a black layer mask to it to hide the effect. I can now get a simple box standard soft edge brush and making sure that my foreground color is white and my opacity is at 100%, I can now paint in that layer style only where I want it to appear, just on these areas on the left hand side. So now if I turn that on and off, you can see that it's just making those dark areas go where we actually brought in some of the background on the left, that's now disappeared, but the dark parts of the main are remaining. So if I turn that off and we'll show the layer mask, turn that off as well, we can see we've not done bad. Like I said, you're never gonna get it looking exactly the same, but I think we can pretty much sell it by doing that. And that is exactly what I did when it came to this image here, the final composite image. And if I just zoom in on this, you can see how that effect has worked, doing a pretty good job of faking the look of the fur. So that is generally one way that you can kind of fake the look of a really tricky cutout. <laughs> 
Now having to recreate the look of hair and fur or paint in hair is nothing new. It's something that as retouchers we've been doing for a long, long time because you know if you're not the one who's done the photo shoot uh, and the background isn't as you would want it, nice and you know contrasted between the foreground and the background, you're going to have to resort to recreating it. And this is a perfect example of showing how you can do it. And there's lots of you know brushes that you can get online to help you with this, but just this simple dotted kind of brush effect works really, really great, especially with the smudge tool. Now since learning this car going by, now since learning this technique, I've used it a lot, uh, and you can see in this picture here where I've had to blur out the face because uh, of, of a contract, but this is a, a part of a picture that I've been working on for Sky Television, one of their TV programs. It's a promotional poster where the original picture, the hair wasn't looking that good. So just using this technique, I've been able to tidy up the hair for them. So there's lots of uses for it, but it's just another technique there to add into your tool bag. So I hope you like that. Now that's all I've got for you techniques wise this week, but as always, you know the score. Make sure if you haven't already that you subscribe to the channel, which is growing really nicely. So thanks so much for the support. Also let other people know about it. But yeah, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time. Oh, one other thing. I'm gonna include in the description of the video a link to where you can download uh, one of the line pictures. So if you want to, you can also practice on it as well. So uh, I hope that's useful. I'll see you next time. Thank you.